When Australian actor Sarah Winter answered the call of Hollywood almost two decades ago, she worked hard to make it. And make it she did, starring with some of the biggest names in some of the biggest TV shows and movies. But at the top of her career, she suddenly stepped away from the spotlight and no one really knew why. Well, now Sarah wants to tell us about the dark secret she was keeping. After giving birth to twins, she suffered a little known but debilitating illness, postpartum psychosis. It meant what should have been the most joyous time of her life became the most painful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, right there. For actor Sarah Winter, this is where she feels right at home. Bam! Playful and sassy in front of a camera. <laughs> That's great. It's easy to see how this one-time Aussie teenager with big dreams made it all the way to Hollywood. OK, now dance. But it's a journey that 10 years ago met with an unexpected and devastating detour. One that played out behind the scenes in secret. Now she's ready to open up about a very private battle new mums face, but rarely speak about. I'm just trying to destigmatize mental illness, maternal mental health, and, and, and the act of asking for help. Doesn't matter who you are or what you have or what it seems like you might have. At 17, Sarah Winter packed her bags and left Australia to try her luck on the world stage. Within just a few years, she began getting noticed, including on hit TV series 24. By the time someone finds me, you'll be 100 miles away. Suddenly, the girl from Newcastle had hit the big time. Even people in my family are like, people know who you are now. <laughs> Now that you're on 24, people know who you are. After enjoying a few years of front page fame, Sarah was ready to take on a very different kind of role. And she and her then husband, Dan, started thinking about a family. I was ready. I really wanted to pull back from work and, and become a, a mum. I wanted a baby. We finally had a beautiful baby boy in uh, 2008. My, my Oscar, I got my Oscar. <laughs> He's amazing. He's my littlest turtle. But Sarah didn't want to stop at one. And before Oscar turned three, she was pregnant again. You know, after sort of failed IVF attempts and a miscarriage, I, um, I found out I was pregnant with twins. Twin boys. <laughs> Strap yourself in. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, was really just thrilled. Cause I thought that's it. You know, now I've got my family. You know, I've, I've got it made. Now all my dreams have come true. Didn't quite work out exactly how you'd imagined it though, right? Didn't, no. I had no reason to expect um, the horror that would, I, that would come my way at all. In April 2011, Sarah's twin boys, Sam and Julian arrived, but it was a stressful time. The babies were six weeks premature and spent the first two weeks of their lives in a neonatal intensive care unit. Sarah's mental health started to deteriorate. That ward in a hospital, it is constant beeping. I, I started to go home at night and continually hear the beeps. And uh, every beep at home would start to sort of um, uh, really rattle me. Back home in Newcastle, Sarah's aunt, Cathy Connell, jumped on a plane to be by her side. As soon as she landed, she noticed something was very wrong. Her happy, easygoing niece was gone, replaced by someone increasingly terrified and paranoid. Nothing really prepared you for what no, you're about to experience? absolutely not. A lot of the things that she uh, was paranoid about are the things that we do on a regular basis now with COVID. But um, even when I arrived, you know, she said, can you quarantine for 24 hours because I'd been on a plane. That was, that was OK. It was probably when she handed me two sets of scrubs and a pair of Crocs that she wanted me to wear while I was in the house that I thought, this is not, this is not good. 
Kathy would wake in the morning to find signs Sarah had been up all night long. It was tragic to watch. She was just spiralling out of control. She couldn't manage her, her own life, but she wanted to man micromanage everyone in the house. Soon, friends began to notice too, like fellow Australian expat Kiani von Muffling, who's known Sarah since those whirlwind Hollywood years. Suddenly, visiting Sarah was like entering an alternate reality. On arrival, uh, I was told to take off your shoes. Oh, OK, that's OK. Would you mind putting on these scrubs? Scrubs? I was really concerned about germs. And then one of my baby nurses, you know, wore scrubs. And I thought, scrubs are good. I'll order some scrubs. We'll all wear scrubs. I added hair nets, masks, booties. And then we had to bleach anyone's phone because phones are covered in germs. I, I must have read that somewhere. Then I was handed a toothbrush and told to brush my teeth, to rinse my mouth with Listerine. You know, my three and a half year old was at nursery school and um, I thought, oh my God, he's gonna bring home a meningitis or something, you know, and we're, you know, we're all gonna die. So he would be stripped, cleaned, face washed, teeth brushed. So all scrubbed up, shoes off, handbag wiped, brushed up, I was, I was taken upstairs to see Sarah. I walk into the room and the first thing I see and my eye is just drawn to the windows. Imagine hundreds of post-it notes covering all the windows. And, and I'm thinking, hang on just a second. I, at, at that point, I knew something was quite wrong. Watching someone you love and adore, who's this incredible human, be that person is, is truly frightening. And when you say that person, who is that person? That person, I would say, was someone who was not able to function as a normal human being. I saw catastrophe everywhere. Um, I'm sure everything looked amazing, but I just, in my head, it was um, danger. And um, everywhere I looked, there was a you know, potential for a catastrophic event, whether it was um, a delivery man that was in a stolen uniform because he was actually a serial killer or a tree that was going to hit the house or a fire or, you know, um, a speeding car. It sounds like something out of a movie, but these imagined scenes to Sarah felt real. Her life was playing out on the set of a horror film she couldn't escape. I remember in the shower one night, I thought, I'm in character. I'm playing someone who's lost their mind. And I've had, like, I really, and then I thought, <laughs> either I'm really insane that I'm thinking that, or I'm really insane because it's true. But either way, I was really scared to open the bathroom door because I didn't know if it was going to be a set and there'd be a wardrobe lady and a makeup artist and a director, or it would be my family. To her family and friends, the catastrophe unfolding was Sarah herself. It was clear something drastic had to be done. I woke up one day from a nice sleep and, uh, and I knew as soon as I opened my eyes, because they were all standing there, oh, this is an intervention. I've, I've, I've seen them on TV. Actor Sarah Winter has her hands full juggling work and playing single mum to three growing teenage boys. But it's taken time and a lot of work to get her here. When her twins, Sam and Julian, were born six weeks premature, Sarah suffered a terrifying mental health emergency. Family and friends, no longer able to watch on, took action and staged a dramatic intervention led by her aunt, Kath Connell. She was shocked and then she burst into tears and she said, I know, I know what you've come. I know. And, and then it was such relief. Maybe it's going to be taken out of my hands. I'm going, yeah, I know. It was just, and at that stage I thought, well, you know, she's, she's on the, the, the first steps to a road. 
that, that might get us through this. You never think you're going mentally ill. You think it's all these other things, like, oh, I'm just not sleeping enough or I'm just worried about this and if I could just do that and if my husband could just, like, just leave and got to cut down that tree. If we can just cut down that tree and if that squirrel could just stop running by that window every time it's waiting for me to look out, the, like, I... <laughs> but you, don't, you never in a million years think, oh, I'm losing my mind. I'm actually becoming, I have a mental illness. No, that was the last thing on my mind. You know, I just thought it was everything else. Sarah was finally diagnosed with postnatal or postpartum psychosis. It's the rare, far more devastating relative of postpartum depression. This was more than just the baby blues. Oh, yes. And I learned, you know, when I did finally talk to some professionals, you know, they said, um, you know, there are three types. There's the baby blues postpartum depression and then postpartum depression with psychosis. And that, Sarah, is what you have. You have postpartum depression with psychosis. The diagnosis was devastating, but also a relief. Finally, Sarah had a cause for her suffering, and finally, she could get better. But her ordeal would remain hidden for 10 years until she bravely shared her story in a magazine article read by women across the globe. Every night I had primal screaming episodes. For a long time, I felt ashamed of my illness. It was a dark secret to anyone, not in my very inner circle. I just think we need more people to be speaking out and to recognise it is okay, you know, it is okay to share the really tough and painful stuff. In Wollongong, Gabrielle McAuliffe was surprised to see someone with such a high profile talk about something so taboo. Gabby's postpartum psychosis also came as a shock. I noticed I, my mood plummeted significantly. Um, that was probably the first thing. I just stopped eating, I stopped drinking. I think maybe even at that stage, I was kind of trying to lie to myself that, you know, that everything was okay. So you felt like you really shut down? Yeah. It, it was really bizarre. At times I felt like my mind was kind of like all these thoughts were kind of racing. Um, and then other times I just felt nothing, like this numbness, deadness inside. For me, it felt pretty instant where she no longer responded to anything and was just numb and blank. Um, one morning it was. Um, and yeah, like I said, do, like, um, do you love me? And it's like, just got nothing. What's my name? Nothing. That was the kind of like, what is going on? Where's Gab's gone? Where's my wife gone? Nothing about Gabby was making sense to her husband, Andrew. As a trained psychologist, even Gabby didn't understand what was happening to her. It wasn't until a concerned friend raised the alarm that the young couple finally sought medical help. What was the first step? I think they diagnosed me that day, essentially. That with... quickly? Yeah. How is postpartum psychosis different to postpartum depression, which we hear much more about? Um, just because of the severity of it, because it affects the woman's ability to kind of process reality, uh, and it's so much rarer, so it's only about one in 500 to one in 1,000 women after a baby will experience it, whereas depression, um, it's about one in five. Dr Rebecca Hill is a perinatal psychiatrist who runs an Adelaide unit treating women with postpartum psychosis and their babies. It has been specially equipped with some very unobtrusive care. It's one of only a handful of dedicated units across the country. This feels like a room they could have at their own home. You know, you've got the cot there, the children's toys. Yes, there's been a huge effort put into making it feel really home-like. Although Gabby was lucky enough to make a full recovery from home, that wasn't the last of it. When she and Andrew had their second baby, Joshua, a year later, she was diagnosed with psychosis again. But this time, Gabby was admitted into a psychiatric institution. Back then, it was the only choice she had. But now, eight years on, finally some good news. In New South Wales, two specialist mental health units are being built, the first due to open in coming months. Having lived through a nightmare twice, Gabby McAuliffe has been asked by the health department to provide advice. She wants to prevent other mothers from suffering the same grief she experienced in the first few months of her baby's lives. You want to be able to love and care for him. Um, 
yeah, and I couldn't do that. And yeah, no, it's not easy. Yeah, even what well, it's been eight years, and you still, still, those things are hard to mm. think about. Um, that was just the illness. My whole brain changed, um, and it wasn't me. So that's how I've made, you know, made sense of it now. That that wasn't you. Um, you were able to develop, you know, a connection and love for your baby, but at that time, you weren't. Yeah. And there's a lot of grief over that. For mums like Gabby and Sarah Winter, there was nothing more isolating than their diagnosis. They'd never heard of the condition, nor knew how to navigate through it. But speaking out has helped, and it sparked a shift in Sarah's career. She's now executive producer of A Mouthful of Air, a film about a mother's battle with mental health. It's a sad one. It's a cautionary tale of what can happen if you don't get help, the right help. It's been quite amazing to let go of a lot of shame around it and, and share it and try and help women. And it makes me feel really, really lucky that that wasn't my story. I got better. My story is a good one. Even with a new cause now driving her, Sarah's favourite role will always be playing mum to Oscar, Sam and Julian. My house is loud, but they are <laughs> extraordinary kids and they are the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. They are endlessly entertaining and maddeningly complicated but brilliant boys. I cannot imagine my life without being experiencing motherhood. And, um, you know, when I see them grow and I see them thrive and I, it, um, I don't know, it's, 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 uh, well, I have no words. <laughs> if this story has raised issues and you need to speak with someone, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.